You may recall uh, in experiment number four, I believe it was, not five, but when we mixed a bunch of solutions together, we did a lot of reaction types. And one of the reaction types that we did uh, was the double replacement reaction. We took silver nitrate, which is dissolved in water, and we mixed it with Ki, which is also dissolved in water. And whenever we see this Aq, this means aqueous, which means this is not the solid, but it's actually dissolved in water. And so we could take this ionic compound and show that it's separated into ions. So the nitrate is the polyatomic ion, and that's the silver ion. And then potassium iodide breaks up into potassium ions and the iodide ions. When we mix this together, we ended up seeing a white solid form. So I'm going to try to do this. And this reaction was when this metal gets together with this nonmetal, and then this metal gets together with this nonmetal. So you may remember me referring to that as wife swapping. So if I put this beaker here, maybe I should not put white. Let me put this on a blue, blue, so that you can see that, maybe. Uh, okay, so I'm just going to put some Ki in here. Put some Ki in the beaker, and that's just still clear. And then when I add silver nitrate to that, silver nitrate's also clear. When we add that, then we see a white solid that forms. So that uh, formed in the test tube, and all we did was write down what we saw happen in that lab. So if I can take this down, maybe show that here. Whoopsie, you can see my messy desk. Uh, and that's not showing up so well. But anyway. Uh, that's a bad place to put down a white piece of paper. So we mix two clear compounds that were both dissolved in water and ended up forming a solid from that. So we see that solid that sunk to the bottom of the beaker. This reaction, we called it a double replacement reaction, but it's referred to as a precipitation reaction. So I'm going to get this refocused again. Uh, and a precipitate is simply a solid that forms after we've mixed two soluble ionic compounds together. And if we write the ionic equation, that's just showing each thing that has Aq written after it, separated as ions. And so before the silver can get together with the iodide, each one of these compounds has to separate into the ions. If we look at this like a math equation, we have a silver ion here and a nitrate ion here. And the nitrate ion shows up on both sides of the equation. So nitrate is called the spectator ion. In other words, it doesn't do anything. It just floats around in water. Potassium is also on both sides of the equation. So remember, this arrow is kind of like an equal sign. So the potassium ions also just float around in solution. Silver iodide, this is insoluble. So if we had a bottle of silver iodide that we bought, if we put that in water, it would not dissolve. So an insoluble compound um, comes out of solution as a precipitate. We're not going to be terribly concerned about that in this chapter, but what we are going to be concerned about is talking about how concentrated a solution is. And there's two ways of talking about solution concentration, and one of those is mass percent. I'm going to try to zoom, get a little bit closer here. So when we talk about um, the concentration of a solution, that's a whole different idea than talking about a reaction. This just happens to be a reaction where we have two soluble salts combining to form an insoluble product. 
most of the chapter is going to be focused on this molarity. That is the capital M that's written on the bottle. But before we get to that, we're going to look at one common concentration unit, and that's mass percent. So any percent, if we think about a percent, it's always the part over the whole times 100. So if we were looking at a solution of salt water, if we wanted the mass percent, the mass of the solute, that would be the sodium chloride that we put in the water. And so the mass of the sodium chloride is part of the whole. So this would also be the mass of the solid sodium chloride. And the solvent in this case would be the water. So this type of problem is very easy to solve because the problem has to give us the mass of the salt, for example, and the mass of the water. The only thing we have to remember to do is add the total mass for the denominator. So we take the numerator, divide it by the denominator, and multiply by 100. The next slide we're going to focus on this capital M, molarity.